hello, I'm Alexandra Spalato. I'm a developer relation engineer at Storyblock, and today we're diving into an exciting topic, AI for React developers. Which are the opportunities? And most of all, how can you learn it? Is it possible to learn it as React or JavaScript developer? So with AI, as you certainly know, you can code faster uh, with applications like Copilot. You can also use it for learning uh, or to explore documentation. But there is much more than that for you if you decide to learn AI. You can use AI to build applications that anticipate user needs, personalize experience, or automate complex tasks. To complex tasks. So if you dream of launching your own SaaS, this is the way. If you consider a career shift, the demand for AI engineers is going to be huge. And as JavaScript developers, your skills are a strong foundation to build on. Okay, so what is the learning path to become an AI engineer? I see. I see you are overwhelmed because uh, if you search on Google or even on ChatGPT, uh, it's how to become an AI engineer, you might think that you need to learn data science, machine learning, mathematics, Python, etc. And yes, it would be awesome to learn all that, but if we had time. As you can see here, uh, each uh, step is a subset of the other one, and now we are here in generative AI, and this is what we need uh, to master. This is a screenshot from Latin Space from Swix, uh, and it says we are observing a once in a generation shift right of applied AI, fueled by the emergent capabilities of open source API availability of foundation model. It means we are here. The machine learning and uh, data science are here. They are research engineer. And so now this means that if you can mean, make a web requ request to interact with an API, you're already on the right path. So first up, let's get the buzzing down. AI is a big umbrella for all the tags that makes machines act, act like they are a brain. Machine learning is a part of AI where computers learn from data. Large language models such as GPT are special tools under machine learning focused on understanding and creating text. So understanding these basics help us to see what AI can do and give us a starting point for diving deeper into the world of AI engineering. So now let's talk about working with APIs. With APIs, we can ask this AI system to do tasks for us. Some of the big names in the space, including OpenAI with GPT, Anthropic with Claude, Gemini for Google, Hugging Face, which offers a wide range of open source AI models. So first, try using these APIs to see what you can create and improve in your projects. It's not just about using them, but understanding how they can change the way we build software. So experimenting with these AI APIs can open up new possibilities for your project and products. And I would also recommend to explore thoroughly the open AI documentation and understand how the assistance APIs works, as well as the function calling. So function calling allows you to connect large language models with external tools. So depending on the user query, the model will call one tool or another. So if we have two tools, one for checking weather and one to send an email, if you ask how you should dress in Madrid today, it will invoke the check weather tool. And if you ask to send an email, it will use the other one, of course. Also, to streamline your work, you can use the Vercel AI SDK, which is compatible with Next, Nuxt, Svelte, Solid, etc. Uh, it has an unif unified API that standardizes the interaction with the various AI models and minimizes the boilerplate code. Then you need to understand RAGs, Retrieval Augmented Generations. With RAGs, we can augment the model with additional data. For example, if you are building a customer service chat, you will first need to feed the model information with data about the company. This will allow the model to use this external information by retrieving it, and from there, it will generate the answer. So let's see how this works. 
First, the information is broken in chunks because the LLMs have a limited number of tokens, so they cannot search in the whole information. So depending on the question, they will find the corresponding chunk semantically similar and we will apply it as context for your query. Then these chunks need to be transformed in embeddings, which involves converting the data in vectors, which are an array of numbers that the machine can understand. Then these embeddings will be stored in a vector database, and then the query will also be transformed in a vector and will search the database by semantic similarity in order to generate the responses based on the most similar context. So uh, this is how it works. Here we have a, have a user that uh, is chatting and the user query is sent to the embedder, transformed in a vector, storing the vector database. Same thing from the data source, the knowledge base uh, is transformed in embeddings, storing the vector database. And then the large language model will find the most uh, similar uh, context and generate an answer to the query, etc. Simple. Okay, so now that you understand that, if you want to build a real-world application, uh, it will not be only a prompt to an LLM. You will need uh, several tasks. Imagine that you build an app to plan vacation, you will need to understand user preferences, find destination, check weather, suggest travel option. And this is where orchestration frameworks like LangChain or Llama Index comes into play. They help us to chain different tasks together, as well as method to chunk, retrieve, embed, generate, etc., and also allows to work with different uh, LLM APIs. You can also use uh, tools like uh, Flowwise, which is a graphic user interface on top of LangChain. And then you will have an API. Uh, you have also some local tools like uh, Relevance that provide you APIs if you don't want to, to do backend stuff. Uh, and then with these APIs, you get the data and you can build your front end as, uh, as React engineers. So, in conclusion, natural language is emerging as a new tool of our trade. But let's not forget, the essence of being a developer cannot be replicated by AI. So our ability to understand deeply, innovate bravely, and solve problems creatively is what makes us uniquely human. So as we embrace AI, remember that it's not a replacement, but a supplement to our human capabilities. Uh, and so as React developers, you can totally learn these, uh, these skills and continue to push the boundaries of what's possible by learning to code with AI and learning to use, to use it to build application. So AI can support us in becoming the best developers we can be. So here you have some uh, links, uh, even more than the one I've talked about, of the applications that you can, that you can use. Uh, so I hope you like this talk. Thank you, and here you have a um, QR code to get the slide. Bye.